this CO2 desktop laser costs $5,000. I already paid $2,000 for this diode laser about a year ago, but I've barely used it. So why did I upgrade? In my previous laser video, I talked about all the unexpected surprises and challenges that came with getting a diode laser, and essentially why I had barely used it after almost a year of ownership. No one ever warns you about this stuff. Like how smelly they are, the need to build an enclosure and add proper ventilation, all the accessories you'll need, and the learning curve required to create designs, master the software, and dial in the right laser settings. It's a lot. If you haven't already seen that video, I'll link it down below. Since that video, I ended up investing some time to figure out what I needed to learn, like how to use Lightburn for example, which for the record is really easy, and actually started making and selling laser cut plywood templates. These templates can be used with a router to make trays and dishes as well as inlays. Sales really started picking up, and this side hustle suddenly turned into a very time consuming activity. You see, even the most powerful diode lasers cut really slowly and require a lot of maintenance time. So when Xtool offered to send me a new CO2 desktop laser, I jumped at the chance to improve my workflow. Okay, hold on, let me step back for a second and introduce you to the lasers. My original laser, the diode laser, is the Xtool D1 Pro 20 watt. That's this one here on the left. And no, my setup isn't pretty, I know. About 18 months ago, I bought this laser and all the add-on accessories with my own money. And I'll break down all the costs in just a minute. My new laser is the Xtool P255 Watt, and this one is a CO2 laser. That's the one on the right here. Now this one was sent to me for free, but I'm not getting paid for this video and I don't owe Xtool anything. I'm here to tell you the honest truth and allow you to make an informed decision and know what you're getting into before buying a laser. Let's talk about the costs of each of these lasers. The diode laser is currently priced at $1,400 US, but you'll need to add on a bunch of accessories that'll easily add another $500 to that price tag. You'll need a honeycomb bed if you plan to do any cutting, as well as an air pump to help prevent burn marks. You'll really need an enclosure, I made one myself using some plywood and a piano hinge. You'll want an inline fan to exhaust the fumes, as well as the flanges, ducting, and a power bar to complete the ventilation system. So at the time of my last video, I calculated that it had cost about 2,500 Canadian all in or about 1,900 US dollars. I went into detail about each of these in my previous video if you wanna learn more about these items. But since then, I actually spent more money on stuff I hadn't planned on. I got tired of wearing the super dark tinted safety glasses that came with the laser. So dark, I couldn't even see my own hands. So I opted to purchase some high quality laser safety glasses. As I was shopping for them, I came across a company specializing in laser safety gear, and they also happened to sell laser viewing windows. So I decided to replace the clear acrylic in my enclosure with a piece of safety acrylic. Each of those costs over 100 USD a piece. And unfortunately for me, this company is in the US and uses UPS for shipping, so I got stuck with an insane customs brokerage and import fees of $127. So in the end, the laser window and the glasses ended up costing me close to 500 Canadian. That's way more than I would have paid had I known. Then I also bought a couple of additional things like some pipe cleaners to help clean the honeycomb and a bunch of degreasers. So all in, I think I'm up to about just under 3000 Canadian or about 2100 USD. Okay, that's for the diode laser. The P2 desktop CO2 laser currently has a 5000 US dollar price tag but it's currently on sale at $42.99. So yes, that's about twice what you'll pay for the dial laser with all the accessories. But with the CO2 desktop laser, it's all there. There's no assembly, no add-on accessories, no need to build an enclosure or add safety glasses or windows. You get everything you need to operate the system all in one box. Plus, it can do so much more than a diode laser can do and do it better and do it faster. And this brings me to my next topic. Let's talk about the advantages of CO2 lasers versus diode lasers. The main advantage of a CO2 laser over a diode laser, in my opinion, is that you can get jobs done much faster. And if you're looking to cut or engrave clear acrylic or glass, diode lasers just can't do it, which was one of the limitations for diode lasers that I pointed out in my previous video. But in my opinion, there's so much more than that. One of the key features of this CO2 desktop laser is that it's all included. 
It's a fully enclosed system with a tinted safety viewing window and a built-in vent. It also has built-in air assist and an adjustable slat bed. So there's no need for a bunch of add-ons like with the diode laser I have. Let's break this down. Number one, it's fully enclosed. So there's no need to build or buy an add-on enclosure. It even has a built-in light. Plus, unlike the diode laser, it comes like this right out of the box, no assembly required. That right off the bat saves you about an hour or two. Next, it has built-in air assist. So there's no need to purchase and connect a separate pump. I don't even know where it is, but it's built right in and turns on automatically. And you can actually control it through the software, i.e. Xtool Creative Space. I leave 100% for both cutting and engraving, but it can be lowered for engraving if you want. I haven't done much engraving to be honest, so mine's always set to 100%. And it's fully automated when the machine is run. Next, it has a large safety shield viewing window. Not only can you clearly see what's happening inside, there's no need to wear laser safety glasses or add a laser viewing shield to the enclosure like I did, which remember is an extra cost. You may not think wearing glasses is a big deal at first, but it gets really annoying and easy to forget. Now, I still wear a mask for the fumes, but we'll get to that later. Still within the enclosure, it has a built-in exhaust fan right at the back here. This theoretically means that you don't need to add an external ventilation and exhaust, but in practice, it's a different story. It actually does a pretty good job at clearing the smoke, as you can see from the footage here, but the smell is another story. We'll get to that in the drawbacks. For now, let's keep focusing on the positives. As I mentioned at the very beginning, the main advantage of CO2 lasers is that they're faster. Not only because they're more powerful, yes, but they simply move faster overall, as you can see by this side-by-side -side time lapse. I'm cutting the same file with both lasers. The CO2 laser on the right is able to cut through this 4mm plywood at a speed of 21mm per second, which will only take it 2 minutes and 32 seconds to complete the cut. In contrast, the dial laser on the left is only able to cut through the same plywood at a speed of 5 millimeters per second. It will ultimately take 10 minutes and 46 seconds to complete this cut. That's more than four times slower than the CO2 laser. So as you can imagine, if you're trying to sell products or print really long jobs, these time savings can really add up. You'll also get a much cleaner cut with CO2 lasers over diodes. You can see on the right with a CO2 laser, if I run my hand along the cut edges, there's no residue and my hand is clean. In contrast, when I run my hand along the diode cut edges, I'm left with black soot on my hands. The edges are really charred and look more like they were burnt than they were cut. Another wonderful advantage of CO2 lasers is their ability to automatically adjust the focus of the laser. With the diode laser, you need to manually adjust the height of the laser module to dial in the focus by using this little pop-out kickstand as a guide. It can be finicky and you need to do it for every new material that you cut or engrave. On my CO2 desktop laser, it's all automatic. No need to manually adjust each time. Using Xtool Creative Space, I simply click on the ruler icon here and wait a couple seconds while the laser sends out a probe to go measure the thickness of the material. The value is then automatically stored and the laser will adjust automatically to account for the thickness. How cool is that? Does having a built-in camera sound a bit excessive? I thought it was until I realized how valuable of a feature it could be for positioning your material. You see, with a diode laser, you would lay out the piece you want to cut or engrave, then roughly position the laser module. 
then go into your software and press on the frame button. The laser will then basically show you the widest area your project is going to cover, and you can visually check to make sure you're staying within the bounds of your workpiece. It works, yes, but if you want to accurately position odd shapes, it can be a bit challenging. This is where the built-in camera on the P2 laser really comes in handy. Again, I just drop in my material, then go straight to my laser software. And just a quick note here to let you know that you have to use Xtool's Creative Space software for the cameras to work. They aren't compatible with Lightburn yet, but maybe in the future. The Xtool software works well with this laser, so that hasn't been an issue for me. Okay, so once you've got your project open, you just go and click on the refresh button up here, and the camera will take a picture. I can now see exactly where my cut will be on my workpiece. It's a little off center, so I can go ahead and recenter it by hitting Control All, then dragging it to where I want it. But as you can see, I'm really close to the edges at the top and the bottom, and it almost looks like I'm going over. There is another option up here called Capture Close View, and when I click on it, I can select a spot to zoom in on, and the camera inside the laser will actually move and go take a close up shot of this area. I can see I'm over the edge of the top. I'll check the bottom to see where I'm at. Okay, I've got some room up here, so I'll drag my shape down a little. Okay, now I can click Capture Close View again and go check at the top to make sure I'm within the bounds. And then repeat as needed until I've got my piece perfectly positioned where I want it to be. To me, this is a really useful feature. Ugh, the cleaning. I truly underestimated how much cleaning a diode laser would constantly require. The bottom plate and the honeycomb get gunked up really fast with residue. The plaque itself I clean every 6 to 8 hours of usage by spraying on a degreaser and wiping it off. The honeycomb I go by eye. When I see a thick film starting to develop or I'm getting a lot of flashing on the back of pieces, I know I need to clean it. But let me tell you. Cleaning the honeycomb bed is no fun. I use a foam type of degreaser that I spray and let sit, then just hose it off. In the summer, I can easily do this outside, but winter is another story. And this cleaning method will only get you so far. At one point, the honeycombs need to be scrubbed. So I got some pipe cleaners to go hole by hole. It takes forever and it's just so messy and gross. Honestly, no fun at all. My CO2 laser, on the other hand, has these slats that can easily be removed. I just spray them with a degreaser, let them sit for 10 to 15 minutes, then scrub them with a toothbrush. Then wipe them off, easy as that. By the way, the best product to clean off laser gunk from your laser bed is a degreaser. I picked up a bunch of degreasers at Princess Auto to try out, and these are my top ones. The Mean Green does okay, but my favorite has to be WD Forder Cleaner and Degreaser. It does a really quick job with the slats and gets them clean in no time. For the honeycomb bed, I highly recommend this Simple Green Barbecue Cleaner. It foams up like an oven cleaner and sort of sticks to the inside of the honeycomb, making it easier to clean than just with a regular spray. I honestly don't quite understand how come I don't get the same residue at the bottom of my CO2 laser than I do on the diode laser, but I haven't had to clean this tray once except for just wiping off the dust. Not having to go through the tedious non-stop cleaning that I did with the diode laser alone makes this upgrade totally worth it in my book. Now this list of advantages could go on and on, but I'll close off the list with one major advantage of CO2 lasers over diode lasers. And that's the ability to cut or engrave clear acrylic. Something that a diode laser just can't do. There are limitations to the type and thickness of material that each specific laser can handle. And let me tell you, the manufacturer specs are often exaggerated, or theoretical should I say. So don't expect to be able to do everything that the advertising claims. Speaking of clear acrylic, I've gotten a lot of requests from people asking if I plan to sell acrylic router templates in addition to my plywood templates. I finally got my hands on some quarter inch clear cast acrylic and I'm starting to test production. 
So let me know down in the comments below if acrylic router templates is something that you'd like to see me add to the online store. Okay, so there are a lot of advantages to CO2 laser, but there are some drawbacks too. I mean, let's start with the most obvious one, and that's that CO2 lasers are more expensive than diode lasers. Keep in mind that you'll pay more for a diode laser than the cost of the laser itself due to all of the add-on accessories that we talked about earlier. But nevertheless, a CO2 laser will cost more overall. But as they say, you get what you pay for. They're heavy. Something I hadn't planned on is how heavy this thing would be. It's delivered fully assembled in a huge box that weighs, I don't know how much, but this thing was impossible to move on my own. By far the biggest challenge I faced was getting it down into my basement and up onto a table. I definitely needed help for this. I should also point out that the machine is quite big, almost twice the footprint of my dial laser, so you need to plan your space accordingly. My biggest gripe with this specific laser is that the exhaust fan isn't powerful enough. It does have a built-in blower at the back here with a 3-inch port on the back that I've exhausted to the outside, out the window. But as you'll see from this air quality monitor, these are the normal readings before I turn on the laser, and these are the readings after less than a minute of cutting plywood. The higher the numbers, the worse the air quality is. The smell was so strong that I had to stop the laser. So just like a diode laser, you'll need to add some sort of fan to help exhaust the fumes. Now, I actually share a wall with my neighbors, so I'm not too comfortable with just venting out the window. So I ended up getting the X-Tool Fume Extractor. It's a box that looks like this, that houses a three-stage filter with a built-in fan. First, there's a cotton pre-filter, then a HEPA filter, and finally an activated carbon filter. The exhaust port from the laser is connected to the smoke purifier, so fumes first get filtered through this box, then get vented outside. It does a decent job, but it's far from perfect. If you look at the readings on the air quality monitor, it's way better than before when I was just venting outside, but it's still not perfect. It does reduce the fumes, but I can still smell them. And that's why I still always wear a mask when operating my laser, and then air out the basement after I'm done, even in the middle of winter. So that's something important to consider. You really don't want to be breathing these fumes in. Think about it. What you're smelling is essentially whatever material you've been cutting that's been vaporized. That can't be healthy. So bottom line, should you absolutely splurge for a CO2 laser? I mean, yes, they're better than diode lasers, that's for sure. But that doesn't mean that there isn't a place for diode lasers too. In my opinion, you may want to go for a dial laser if you mostly want to do engraving and occasionally cut very thin materials. You don't need to cut clear acrylic or glass. You don't care about how long it takes. Maybe you just want to use your laser as a hobby or for the occasional engraving, and you're not batching out products. You don't mind the tedious cleaning process when it comes to cleaning gunk off the honeycomb and bottom plaque, as well as frequent cleaning of the laser itself. You're more than ready to take on the DIY setup, including building an enclosure, custom ventilation setup, as well as manually adjusting the laser focus each time and manually framing each job, etc, etc. Almost nothing is automated, so you'll have to be diligent about actively managing each job. And finally, if budget is a key consideration for you, because cost will definitely be the most limiting factor when considering a CO2 laser. And that brings me to reasons to opt for a CO2 laser. If you plan to do more cutting than engraving. Dial lasers can cut thin materials, but they're really meant for engraving more than anything else. If you want to cut anything thicker than quarter inch material, or if you want to cut clear acrylic or glass, dial lasers just can't, so you'll need a CO2 for this. 
If speed is important to you, i.e. if you're batching out products to sell, you'll definitely find it frustrating to work with a dial laser due to its slow speed. And mainly if you want a no-fuss, all-in-one, easy, contained setup. No need to buy a bunch of additional accessories, no assembly required, no need to build an enclosure, to wear glasses, to manually adjust focus or frame jobs, etc, etc. A desktop CO2 laser makes everything much more user-friendly, but consider that you'll still likely need to purchase a filtration unit or set up ventilation to exhaust the fumes outside. For me, the choice is clear. Now that I have a CO2 desktop laser, I would never go back to a dial laser. And actually, I'm very likely to sell my dial laser soon to clear up some space because it's gotten way too tight in here. Remember to check the description box below for links to my router templates, all the tools and accessories that I talked about in this video, and my previous dial laser review. It's all right down here. Thanks for watching. See you soon.